welcome so much, so much, especially today. This is not an easy time for us locally and nationally. So that you have made time and gathered the energy to come here, I'm really grateful. And I will get back to that. There's a few things I would like to share with you later on. But for now, I will stick with the program, which is there's three basic things I want to talk about today you can do right away to improve your health. Before I reveal those three things, I would like to tell you about naturopathy. Now, this is the way I look at improving your health is through the angle of naturopathy. Naturopathy actually is a coined word. It was created about 100 years ago. It is um, a construct, if you will, uh, derived from the Greek language. It comes from the two words natura and patia, which means we want to heal pain with nature. And I think that's uh, basic enough. That's a good approach for me. The reason why this word was created in this country in the first place, by the way, by a man named Benjamin Lust, who came from Germany, is because the medical establishment already was very much influenced by the pharmaceuticals and the, the people who were now starting to produce pharmaceuticals. And it was kind of looked down upon using nat natural remedies. But I think it's, it's very, very important that we do not lose touch with nature. And nature has helped us for centuries, millennia. They have always been those doctors in the little villages in the, uh, wherever people gathered who asked nature to help to come back to balance again. Um, in the Middle Ages in Europe, there actually were unions for health practitioners. There were the teeth pullers. There were the herbal, mostly women. There were the surgeons, which was, of course, without anesthesia. So they're all, there were different unions within the bigger understanding of health practitioners. That's where I come from. I'm a natural health practitioner. I'm a naturopath in this country. The natural health practitioners in Europe are highly revered and respected. And they are almost on the same level as a medical doctor, which would be an MD. In this country, it is not so. We also have NMDs, but even those in this country do not get the support they deserve. There's hardly any insurance that covers naturopathic treatments. So it is really hard to make this accessible for a lot of people. Okay, so that's about naturopathy. Now, before I go into the three actions I want to introduce today, I also want to say that um, it has nothing to do with prescription or diagnosis. No medication, no surgery required. This is all about what you can do without really feeling disempowered. It's just the opposite. This is about self-empowerment. There's so much that is available to us without having to go to the doctor or to the hospital. And that is key for me. So before I give my three cents, I was wondering, if you were in my position right here, what would you tell us or your best friend or your loved ones? What is the number one thing you think we all should do to improve our health naturally? Anything that comes to mind you want to share? Nutrition. Yes. Okay, and I heard something else. Yes. Okay, walk, exercise, playfulness. Yes. Rest. Great. Yes. Okay, so now because... I wrote really big, I already filled the whiteboard, but it gives you an idea. So nutrition, breath, walking and exercise, playfulness, rest and meditation. Sounds good, doesn't it? Okay, so I took the liberty to take those and a few others and put them on a sheet, which is a handout now. Please, would you mind to share this? So I made a visual of the famous pie chart model, and I called it the wheel of healthy self-care. 
and I would like to go through this very briefly so you get the bigger picture before we go in those three individual actions. All I'm going to say is something you know. What I would love to do with you here in this hour we have, take a different spin on any of those and enlarge our understanding of it, of all of them. So this is the wheel of healthy self-care, or you can call it whatever you like. Um, I took those different divisions of this pie and put some things in there which are meaningful to me. And I hope they inspire you to put in there that what is meaningful to you as well or in addition to. So I'm going to start at noon right here. And I think, Michelle, you said breath. Yeah. So breathing, of course. Where would we be if we were not breathing? It is key. Um, the awareness of the breath and what we can do with the breath and what the breath does with us. And the techniques we could learn, it's not that hard, what we could do with the breath in order to give the body more of this we call breath of life. So this would be one part of the pie which I think is very important. We all should be aware of and contemplate about it, what we can do with that. The next one is meditation. Yes, see, meditation. Meditation with music, without music. Maybe using music as meditation. Maybe using silence as the vehicle to become meditative. The next area is water, H2O. Again, what would we do if we wouldn't have access to water? We wouldn't make it very long either. So hydration is key. And water has so many incredibly enriching functions we often forget. Water is not just there, thank you, water, to be drunk, drinked, drunken. Oh, that can't be right, to be drunk. Um, but we use water for teas, for baths, for washes, and for <laughs> what I will get into later again, what I call the Kneipe applications. That is after another German natural path, um, Sebastian Kneipe, and I will get to that, back to that later. The next one is also very dear to my heart. It's habit awareness in all aspects. What do we do during the course of the day? Do we really do what we want to do, or, or do we adhere to certain roles we think we have to fulfill in order to be liked, be respected, be accepted, or simply make it through the day. But are those habits really serving us to make it through the day? Or are there easier ways we could at least try and see what would happen? Next one is nutrition. We have that on the board. Nutrition awareness. Nutrition consciousness, which I call to be more conscious of what we actually put in our body. And what the body can do with what we eat or drink. Are we aware of the nutrients that are in the food that we eat? Are we aware of what happens in our digestive tract? Are we aware of what our body needs in terms of nutrients and supplements? The next part is just by itself sleep and nothing else. Rest, sleep. It is fundamental, it is basic and yet do we really allow ourselves to get enough of it? Do we really allow ourselves to get qualitatively deep, really rejuvenating sleep? Or do we toss and turn and say, well, I've been in, in bed for eight hours, but I really only slept four. That is not sleeping. Next one is relaxation. Yes, that was mentioned too. And I would take this as a means to release stress we accumulate. Whatever that be, playing ball, listening to music, walking, bicycling, whatever it is, playing the guitar, in order to release the stress that inevitably is around us. It is the famous time out we all deserve. Last but not least, how about joy? Laughter. What are you passionate about? What are your dreams? What are these things you wanted to see happen when you were a child, when you were a youngster? What happened to them? Were they all foolish or are they still somehow 
meaningful for you? Is there still something you would like to look into? Is there something that still has pull for you? And it would make the world a better place, a more colorful place, maybe even a more loving place. Have you really followed all those visions you had, the dreams, the desires? Now, all these parts create the wheel of healthy self-care. My question for you is, how are you doing in all these areas? Is there something else you want to put in these areas? And I would love for you to take this handout home with you and play with it. Are you doing not so much in one area? I would say, just mark it somewhere here. Are you doing really well in one area, let's say sleeping? You're getting all the sleep in the world and it's wonderful. Then you could make a mark way out here and then see what you come up with. Is the circle small? Is it looking rather interestingly shaped? Or are you slowly, slowly approaching a wider and wider range in all areas, evenly spaced? This I would call living in balance. And this is a state we all deserve to live in. We may not be there right now, but there is really nothing that will hold us back from getting closer to that. It is not about money or disabilities. These are things that are just worth your contemplation. What area needs a little improvement? Let's get creative. How can I make it possible that I get another nap in, in the middle of the day? How can I become more aware of my water intake? What would it take for me to maybe just change one thing in my nutritional habits that would really feel great. So these would be questions I would be asking. So this is for you to take home. I will give you, give you another one after you've listened to me. So now I would like to talk about the three things you came today you wanted to hear about. And one, not surprisingly, is in fact I want to talk about breath. Breath is irreplaceable and it is of a value that it cannot be bought or sold. You don't really have to work for it. It comes to you without you doing anything. In fact, if you try to not let the breath come into your body, this is a very arduous task. Breath wants to come and fill your body. It is free. It is coming. We don't have to do anything. We can just be of the state of receptivity. Yes, thank you. The next breath is coming. I will be living for another breath and another breath. This is not a commodity. This is one of the most precious gifts that is available to us around the clock as human beings on this planet. So breath, what are we doing with the breath? The breath is what, what gives us life. But do we really give it the attention it deserves? Have you ever caught yourself holding your breath, not allowing a fresh breath come in? Have you ever caught yourself, even in body postures, to denying the breath to access your lungs? Have you ever, on the other side, expelled breath because you just couldn't bear to hold it any longer? Breath is the vehicle how we express ourselves. It is very, very precious. And I would like you to go on a little journey with me right now, a journey into breath awareness. What is the breath doing right now in your body? You're all sitting already, but now officially I invite you to make yourself comfortable. Don't just sit there. If the shoes are too tight, take them off. If, if the pants are too tight, loosen them. Loosen your belt. If you want to take off your heads, take off your heads. Take off your glasses. Take off your uh, watches. Whatever you want to do. Nobody is going to see it because in a moment I will ask you to close your eyes. So whatever it takes for you to be really comfortable, do that. Wiggle yourself in a position you could comfortably stay for a few minutes. And take a deep breath. And exhale. And I invite you to close your eyes 
and just follow the sound of my voice, which most likely will be traveling around the room because I will be moving around the room. All your attention is on the most relaxed state you can allow your body to be in in this moment and on my voice. There's nothing else you have to do. Nothing else you have to do for a few moments. This is for you to become aware of breathing. In a few moments, you will become aware about how the body is getting ready for a fresh, new incoming breath. And I invite you to give it all the attention you can gather. Become aware of the next incoming breath, how it enters your body, and what happens while this beautiful, fresh breath is effortlessly entering your body. Are you noticing that your chest might be slightly rising? Are you noticing what is your head doing? It might be slightly tilting. How about your belly? Do you feel it gently expanding with the incoming breath? Are you inhaling through your nose? And does that come naturally? How are you exhaling through the mouth? What happens in your body once this precious breath of air has entered your body? Is there a moment of stillness? And then the conscious experience of the breath leaving the body again. How does that feel? What is your mouth doing? Is it relaxed? Is it slightly open? Could it be that not just your mouth is exhaling? Could it be that your whole body is exhaling? Exhaling everything that doesn't serve us anymore. Exhaling all the heaviness, the heartache we have taken on in the last couple days and before, since the beginning of time. With every exhale, we have the opportunity to release and let go and release and let go of all the sorrows and all the emotions that may be too much to keep inside. Bring your attention to your lungs. How do they feel when you allow yourself to exhale maybe even with an audible <sighs> Give this breath the attention it deserves. Every exhale, watch it, let it leave gratefully, and welcome another inhale. And now I invite you, with a few more breaths, to see if we can breathe in unison, if we can synchronize all this, what we're going through. We are all in this together. We can breathe deeply together. We can inhale and let go. We can inhale deeply and let go deeply and allow our jaws to relax and open ourselves one more, one more inhale deeply and let go deeply and since i have you all sitting here 
please take your hands and fold them over your tummy. Lay them over your belly like a little Buddha. And see if you can help the next incoming breath to actually come all the way down to where your hands are and meet your hands with the next incoming breath. And see if you actually can breathe into your belly and by extension into your hands. And just watch. How does that feel? So, now, what has happened here? I would say we just have self-medicated with breath. This is what it takes. It is available for you. It is here. We just have to allow to let it in. Now, breath alone is the carrier of oxygen. We all know this. And we could probably get a lot of details about that. We do know that the intake of oxygen is critical for survival. Without breath, we would not make it. If you want to live fully, joyfully, energetically, to the best of our abilities, we have this awesome, awesome helper. It's the breath that gives us everything we need to oxygenate the blood, to help the blood, to reach the organs, reach the muscles, to help the whole body to have an exchange of nutrients, trace minerals, whatever the body needs, wherever it needs it, to keep everything flowing and alive. This is what other people sell in a bottle and label it. What if, before you go to the pharmacy, what if you see what a deep breath can do for your body? How deep breathing can move things around and help the body to stay in homeostasis and do what it is designed to do to have a continuous flow of everything that helps it to sustain itself and to release all that it doesn't need anymore. It is all in the flow. Without breath, there's no flow. So one of the three actions I wanted to introduce you today, and it's on the chart too, is being aware of this incredible energy we can feel in our body through simply breathing. No medication required. No surgery required. All you need to do is breathe. How simple is that? So, we have oxygenated our blood now. We have supported an increased intake of nutrients. And we feel energized. We feel alive. Um, just stay. <laughs> Don't start dancing yet because I have two more actions I would like to talk about. The next one is being aware of what water can do for us. Now, it is said that we're 70 to 70 percent water in our body. Now, this may or may not be true. It probably varies. There might be different schools. But I think we all can, can agree there's a lot of fluid that's going through our tissues. And without that, we'd just be one shriveled old mass. So we want to be lubricated. We want to have a lot of fluid in our body. And we have access to water. Although it may not be that easy to get really wonderfully clean, pure water, at least in this environment it is possible. And it should be of paramount importance to all of us. Water is a transporter, a catalyst, a diluter. Health doesn't necessarily come in a pill. Whatever you take in the body, it has to be liquefied with the help of water. It has to be diluted. It has to, to be transformed into a fluid so that it can come into the intercellular um, environment which is filled with fluid and then the exchange of the fluids can happen without water nothing none of this can happen so 
how do we do this? We drink water. That's easy enough. Do we drink enough water? Do we drink pure water? When do we drink it? How do we drink it? Do we drink it with gratitude or do we drink it with, oh my God, I haven't drunk enough water? What do we do when we connect with water? Are we aware of the fact that we are actually drinking water through the pores of our skin as well? And that goes for everything we put on the skin. Is this helping our organism to stay in optimal function or not? Have we thought about that? Would it be a good idea to think about it? What else are we doing? Are we taking showers with that understanding, baths with that understanding? Could we use water as the carrier, diluter, diffuser, and catalyst to help certain body parts who need more attention than others by cold packs, hot, hot packs, herbal packs, poultices? Um, these are all old-fashioned remedies from ancient times. It doesn't take much to support the body with a hot and cold application, maybe going to a creek somewhere and just stepping in the cold water and see what it does to your circulation. Have you had water rubs? Are you ever immersing yourself in water? Are you doing water aerobics? There's so much we can do with water because we will connect with it with every pore of our skin. We can apply whatever the body needs through the skin. And we also can have teas, infused waters, diluted fruit juices. There is so much we can do with water. It is, once you really get into it, there's no limit to it. Aromatherapy is greatly enhanced if we dilute things in water. There's so much that can be done. So I would say, although it is not mentioned here, my second primary action I want to introduce to you today is become aware of this incredible capacity of water to help your body heal internally, externally, and become creative with it. I'm talking about water. I'm almost done. So I want to just say one more thing. So this man, another German man, he actually was very famous uh, beginning of the 20th century. His name was Kneipp, Mr. Kneipp. And this is the German pronunciation. You probably would say it differently. So Mr. Kneipp, Mr. Kneipp, was somebody who had inspired people to have outdoor clinics. No joke. Outdoor clinics for hot and cold water applications. They had little basins that would just walk in the water to get their circulation up round and round and round. They would do hot showers, cold showers, hot fermentations, and the results were amazing. And really, I don't even understand how it happened. It all was forgotten. A couple of decades later, nobody even cared about that anymore. If you had a, have a headache, you have a choice. You can have hot towels, cold towels. There's so many options you have other than an aspirin. So water is important medicine. So now I would like to go through the third action, which is almost bigger than the other two. Um, and I will have to quote somebody else. I didn't quote him, but I said his name. Okay, we're going all the way back hundreds of centuries ago to somebody who was called Hippocrates. Hippocrates is called the father of medicine, natural medicine, not the father of pharmaceuticals. A lot of quotes are attributed to him. One is, and I'm sure you have known this, heard this one, it's, uh, let food be thy medicine. So the third action I want to talk about is nutrition consciousness. What are we doing with what we take in as food and drink, really? Um, there's also another quote which is attributed to me that says, health begins in the gut. And now it gets really exciting with all the signs that has come forth lately in the last 10 years. Yes, we're seeing more and more and more that health is so dependent on 
the milieu of your intestinal tract. It is critical. Now, what happens in the intestinal tract? That's where the food passes through. Hello. It all makes sense all of a sudden. We are what we eat. Food can be medicine or not. Food can be toxic too, and there's plenty of that around. Are we aware of our choices? And that now can be opening, it can be opened up in so many avenues we can go with that. What is the food that is good for you? What is the food you feel most energized? It has to do with heritage, blood type, age, um, the level of activities, um, what you need in terms of mental food. There is so many variations what you need. Not one is like another. Are we really looking deeply what feeds us optimally? Or are we just believing whatever the latest diet scheme is or like this is better than this and then two years later it's all like, oh, don't do that ever. So all great information, but what is right for you? Can you sense what your body says, what the messages are when you put something in your mouth? Does it say, ah, or ah? It is a matter of becoming more and more aware what we do with food. It has to do with what the condition of your intestinal tract is at the moment, too. If there's something your body cannot assimilate, then we have to ask ourselves, why? Is it because we don't agree with the food? We may be what is called allergic to the food. Or is there something missing? Could we enhance the ability of the body to disassemble food and metabolize by changing a few things, nothing critical. Maybe we need more enzymes, maybe we need less cooked food, maybe we would want to separate certain foods at certain times of the day, maybe we're still eating the food we ate when we were children, and I can assure you, children need a different kind of nutrition than middle age folks, men, women, there are so many dif differences, so many variations. So we may not be able to live on cornflakes for our whole life. So it's all to do, it has all to do with what is my body telling me? I'm eating something. Is that really feeling, make me feeling energized or am I actually wanting to take a nap? Am I overtaxing my body? Maybe it's too much food. Maybe it's too much of a certain food. Do I have to lay down? Do I feel crampy? Do I have uh, other uh, intestinal disturbances? What are we going to do about it? Are we going to keep eating the same thing if this is how we feel? Or are we going to experiment what is really good for us at this time? So I think nutrition awareness is key. It will help us to come back to a really intimate conversation with the body. What does it mean to be hungry? How does it feel? How does it feel to be thirsty versus hungry? How does it feel to be um, stressed out and we think we're hungry? How does it feel? We may really be dehydrated and we think we have to have a cream puff piece at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Is that the best choice? So it really has to do with thinking about how our body responds to what we put in it. If we don't do that and we don't listen to how the body is communicating with us, we may always take the shortest route of the, le the most convenient, which is most likely the most inconvenient for the body. That means if we go the route of fast food that has pre been prepared by machines, by who knows where, has traveled for who knows how long, and is deteriorated, is colored, is totally uh, transformed into something that is called edible but may not be, that is something I call food remnants. If this is what we eat, what are we doing to our body? Are we sustaining our body to be the best it can be? Most likely not. 
and although it is very easy to fall into these easy choices around the corner, I think in the long run it doesn't serve us. We are putting things in our body that the body doesn't know how to disassemble, the body doesn't know what to do with it, and then it lands in areas where it doesn't belong, and then we get symptoms, we get inflammation, we get um, all kinds of bodily functions are not in place anymore, and then we have to go to the doctor and say, what happened? Something is wrong, I need a pill. So, if we establish a deeper, more meaningful dialogue with our body, what our body really, really thrives on, we, never, we may never have to go to that place where we have to go to the doctor and say, give me a pill. And this is really one of the reasons I'm doing what I'm doing. Awareness is just as important as an apple a day to keep the doctor away. So if that is the message, that's the message in a, in a nutshell. And that's really all I wanted to say about that today. Um, the three actions you can take right now is become aware of how breath invigorates you, become aware of how water can help you to give the body what it needs at any given moment, and thirdly, most importantly, become more conscious of what feeds your body optimally, whatever you put into it. And to make it easy for you, I did make a handout but you're getting it now because you all listen. That's awesome. So would you like to pass that out? And there's really nothing more I wanted to add to this other than that I'm incredibly grateful that you all came. But there's something else I wanted to say. Now, I think we all agree that we live in rather intense times. There's a lot of emotional upheaval going on. And I think it is wonderful that we actually feel what we feel. Although sometimes it may be overwhelming and we almost feel victimized by how much we feel about what's going on in the world. My turn on that is, okay, so I'm here now and I feel things about what is happening around me and I feel empathy, I feel grief, I feel sadness, I feel a lot of, lot of things for what has happened to people uh, nearby and further out. Now, what do I do when I feel that way? Where do I feel that? I do feel that in my body. My body is taking that on. We are indivisible. It is not that I'm just this emotional little bubble in here. No, my body feels it. I feel it in every cell of my body. Now this gives me even more reason than ever before to tell everybody, look, it is wonderful to feel, to be empathic, to be passionate. But it is your body as a whole who is feeling that. So please, please, please take care of your body more than ever. More than ever. Help it to function optimally. Help it to feel balance. Even if it's not all day long, just those little moments of time out and coming back home and feeling that, yes, I'm here. Yes, I'm present. Yes, I feel and it's okay. Embrace it. Nurture it. Don't fight it. Strengthen it so then we can step out and help somebody when we feel like there's something we can do to help this person. If I feel de-energized and victimized, I can't help nobody. I'm going to go home and just eat donuts. I may not. But you know what I'm saying, right? If you want to make this, this world a better place, <laughs> start here, start here, come home, start here. You want to help somebody? You want to give energy to somebody to make them feel better? You got to have access to that energy. You have to allow this energy to flow through you too. Flow, flow through you and out to whoever you choose to. Okay. I allow myself to say that once more, and I'm really passionate about this. If you want 
to help others because you see sufferings, you see uh, injustice, you see heartache, you see pain, you see catastrophes. Strengthen yourself so you have something to share. Be gooder than good to yourself. So you are the vehicle to make connections, to help move something, to have the energy to bring a little sunshine in a place of darkness, to bring a little bit of uplifting energy. This is what it takes. It is not about us all huddling under the table. It is all about us sensing more deeply how we can strengthen ourselves and share. So, okay, I thought I'd share that today. Yeah. Thank you so much for listening. Okay, so there is a Q&A if you want it. Thank you for coming. Thank you so much for coming. I am so grateful to each and every one of you. Oh my God. I wish you all the strength you allow to come to you to walk out of here and back into your life full and energized so that you make the right choices and you know what's good for you so you can walk tall and strong and share your strength with whoever needs it without depleting yourself. Depletion is not growth. Uh, first of all, I just want to appreciate you for being here and everybody for being here. Probably like most of you, I was trying to decide whether to come. There's a lot going on, and there are times when I just want to, you know, not interact with anybody else because there's so much, at least in my world that I work in, with people in crisis and people with problems. But I came for a couple of reasons. I came to support you and whoever else showed up here because I suspected that the people that came here are both, and it's I can see by who's here, the people who are doing in the world and are healing. And it gives me hope and joy to know that even when things are difficult, we can be there for each other and for mm -hmm. ourselves. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's, I guess, part of why I came. And the question I had for you is, you know this, not everybody does, but I've worked with you and you've helped me in a lot of ways. and. Part of what you do that I appreciate is all the things you put up there and hand it out, but also you do physical hands-on healing that not everybody does. And I just wonder if you could say a little more about that, both in terms of naturopathy, if that's part of that system, because I'm not familiar with that, or where that fits with the work that you do with these other things that you talked about tonight. I hired him to say that. <laughs> <laughs> <It's pretty good. laughs> no, I'm joking. That's really great, Jen. No, I didn't even know I was going to answer that. So, so okay. Um, yes, I'm a reflexologist. I'm, I do acupressure. And I have developed something I call energy balancing, just for simplicity. And yes, it is hands-on, or rather hands-on and off. Um, we all are energetic beings. More often than not, when we feel pain in a part of our body, it is because for several reasons there is no allowance to move this energy field. If we can move an energy field and bring it back into flow, most likely the pain will disappear. It can be done. It has been done. All I'm interested is in seeing people live in vital balance. Then pains come and go. They will not stay. We are not doomed to be a special case of rheumatoid arthritis for the rest of our lives. We can sign up for that. But there's ways to lighten that burden too. And yes, that is energy balancing. And it really works when there's allowance to make that happen. If you resign yourself to be a certain case that needs care from here on out till the end of your life, most likely there's not that many changes we can make. But if you're willing to 
take it to the quantum level, things change. Change can happen. Okay, so, and Suzanne asked me to talk about this. Yes, she did. <laughs> um, what do I mean when I say take it to the quantum level? Whatever you decided that is going on with you right now or has been and defines you as being in a certain state of configuration, let's question that lovingly. Is this really all you are? Or is it something you have defined and confined yourself to? Can we step aside and look at let's just say physical symptoms from another perspective. Is there something else that might be going on? Um, bring me all the blood tests you get at the his uh, hospital and we will look at them and I will say, hmm, I know this is supposed to mean such and such. What if though it also could mean such and such? What if we step back and look at it in the bigger picture and we can move things around? Literally, we can move things around. We can allow ourselves to go from hypertension to normal tension. We can allow ourselves to go from hypoglycemic to having a normal blood sugar level. We are not victims of our bodies. Once we start to talk with our bodies with the utmost sincerity, things can change on the quantum level. There is no judgment. We just look and look again and allow the situation as it is to tell us that part of the story we have not heard yet. We have, have heard the story of the pre-diabetic and whatever we might have been told. But that may not be the whole story. So we step back, we step aside and we look again. And all of a sudden, there are messages we have not seen before, and this is where the opportunities for change come in. And then there's no limit to opportunities for change. It goes on and on and on, and we actually become a different, different version of ourselves. And there are all kinds of versions of ourselves. So why resign myself to one rather sickly, um, low energy, depleted and restricted version of myself while as long as there's breath coming through me, there is another option how I can express this energy. So I know it sounds a little esoteric really, but it, it's quite practical. It is just different from person to person. Thank you, Jed, for asking. That was really cool. I'll just, uh, it's not a question, it's a statement. As someone who's worked with you, Tanya, I think the work you do is quite magical. Mm -hmm. It's very, very effective. And I didn't have to twist all of that one either. <laughs> okay, because you're so good to me, I'm going to put some more music on. And I invite you to just feel this precious body you are in. And if you want to move, move. If you want to have some water, have some water. If you want to chat, I'm here to chat. Thank mm -hmm. you.